In the previous video, I used the token provided by the Try It Now button, and I mentioned how this token will always be well formed and will have all the scopes needed for the particular API endpoint the button is on. Now I will cover how to configure your app so the token it gets will also always be well formed and will have all the required scopes. Our APIs make use of the OAuth 2.0 protocol to manage applications access. You can read more about the protocol at OAuth.net. Uh, there's a ton of great documentation here. But a key piece that we're interested in right now is that OAuth uses a scopes mechanism to give different rights or privileges to an access token. You can think of an access token as a hotel key card. In this analogy, the scopes an access token has would be the set of rooms and areas of the hotel that the card will grant access to. So maybe the scopes on a key card would be room 133 and the fitness area, but not access to the concierge lounge. So we need to play the role of hotel front desk worker and grant our apps access to the necessary rooms in the iTwin platform hotel, uh, so to speak. So how would one accomplish this? You come to developer.bentley.com. In the top right, you select my apps. I already have two registered uh, under my account. Uh, if you didn't, you would click register new button here. Um, I'm going to click on this app to edit it. Now, going back to the hotel analogy, I'm going to play the role of front desk worker and give it access to a couple rooms, or another way of saying it, a couple APIs. So the two that we know we're going to need for our app is projects and iModels. So I click save and save again. And it says this app was successfully modified. So that added scopes for iModels modify, iModels read, projects read, and projects modify. But how will you know what specific scope your apps need? Well, the documentation for each API endpoint lists the required scopes in the authentication section. So for this Git project iModels, uh, the only scope we need is iModels colon read. And since this is the only iModels endpoint we're hitting, we want to make sure that we have this iModel scope and only this iModel scope configured in our app. So here it is, iModels colon read, but I also have iModels colon modify, which I don't need. Uh, my app is a read-only app. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to iModels manage scopes, and I'm going to remove iModels colon modify and save. You want to limit the scopes your app has access to as much as possible. Going back to the hotel analogy, you don't want people getting to areas of the hotel where they're not permitted. So this app is now configured to have access to the scopes we're going to need. In the next video, we're going to start developing our application, and the first step will be to sign in and acquire access token with this set of scopes.